What's up, you guys? Paige here. I just want to say welcome to The Beaver Show. And I know you're going to enjoy it. And be safe out there. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Do whatever you can um, to keep everyone safe. Much love to you. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Beavis Family Vlog. Today we're going to be doing an episode around my wrestling career, uh, what happened when my sister moved to the WWE, and uh, also about our Hollywood hit movie, Fighting My Family. So I'm going to start by talking about my wrestling career. Um, so I've had um, a pretty successful wrestling career so far, although I haven't quite made it to a WWE status, living the dream with a full contract and doing all these shows with the WWE. Um, I have travelled around quite a lot in my career. Um, I've been, I've done most of Europe, I've done America, I've done Mexico. So I started my career, as I said, as a, a manager at the age of six years old. I was travelling around as the Blue Power Ranger or Dink the Clown. Um, at the age of 10, I made my professional wrestling debut uh, for a company called Rumble Promotions, ran by Stephen Barker. Uh, we were at the Princess Theatre in Clacton. Someone let him down and I got put into an eight-man tag where I made my debut at 10 years old. I then went on to become Zach Zodiac at the age of 13. And from 13 to 19, uh, I was performing under a mask as Zach Zodiac. Uh, even got a short stint traveling around with TNA as their, their setup guy doing the rings. Uh, and before shows, getting in the ring with the superstars and, uh, you know, basically just rolling around with them. And um, that led to Jeff Jarrett saying that I could have a tryout, so I moved to America, trained out there, but it just wasn't to be. This isn't the time and the place to start sitting there and slagging people off or, you know, talking about how you didn't make it. The simple fact is, I didn't make it, it didn't work out. So I come home, I had a few tryouts with the WWE. I honestly thought my last one, where I was in the ring with the big show on a three on one, I honestly thought I'd been signed there and then, but it wasn't to be. Um, so then my brother Roy come up to me and said, hey, why don't we become a tag team known as the UK Hooligans? Um, so we started off as the UK Hooligans in 2010. And uh, 10 years later, I can honestly say that, you know, it's been a huge impact in my wrestling career. Uh, my brother's taught me a lot about the world of professional wrestling, the etiquette, how to carry yourself, um, you know, and sort of educate me to what the crowd want as well. I mean, there's many different types of the UK hooligans. One minute we're doing a comedy act, the next minute, you know, we're two thugs in, in a pub fight. And, uh, you know, learning what the crowd want uh, just by watching the couple of matches before yours really helped me come to terms with professional wrestling and understand what the business needed and what the match required and the fact that you have to be versatile and different on every single show that you go to. Um, traveling around the world, tagging my brothers, some of the best times of my life, uh, especially when we were the first tag team to go to Mexico since the British Bulldogs. Um, what a fantastic trip that was. Uh, not saying that I want to go back because Mexico was real scary. Uh, there was guns going off during a wrestling match at one point. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, We've held multiple tag team championships. We've held single championships, you know, and I think the, the reason it worked is we were two very good single wrestlers coming together to make a tag team. And the fact that we were brothers and, you know, just with just a little turn of the head or, you know, a, a slight position of the eyes, I knew exactly what Roy was doing and he knew what I was doing. Uh, and that's currently where we're up to in my wrestling career at the moment. Uh, I still work as Zack Knight in singles, but predominantly I work as the hooligan Zack Knight with my brother Roy. So as you guys see in the movie, um, my sister got picked up at 18 years old. Um, she was at the same trial as me. She did get picked. Um, basically, it was along the lines that they were like, okay, Raya, you're coming to WWE. The rest, thank you very much. Um, and... It wasn't no bitterness towards my sister. It was, um, you know, it was hard. I mean, ever since I was three years old, you've seen the movie at three years old. I could name every wrestler just by their boots. I'm a wrestling fanatic. I'm obsessed with wrestling. I study every day. I watch every single brand. Um, you know, some people call it a punter. Not me. I call it studying. You know, you need to come up with the times. You need to be able to see what the fans are enjoying at this time. And that's something that I like to do is study professional wrestling. But when my sister uh, got signed to the WWE and she left, uh, it was a difficult time. 
Um, because although I was very, very proud of my sister, there was a part of me that wanted to be there with her. We always said, oh, we'll do it together. You know, you go, I go. We created the mansion that we're living together. You know, everything was always, we would do it. Um, and when she got signed, there was, of course, a little bit of jealousy because, you know, that was the dream that I wanted. Um, but there was nothing that was portrayed in the movie. I didn't attack my sister in a wrestler match. None of that actually happened. Although I was very quiet to start with, you know, so was Raya. She moved out there. She had a, a busy schedule. I would speak to her at some night times, you know, and it's a difficult time for us. You know, she found it hard to settle in and was very homesick. And uh, I found it very hard to sit back and, you know, watch her go through that. It was an emotional time. Uh, she proved us all wrong. She obviously made it to the very top and, um, you know, has written history with her career on what she's done. But at that time, it was very difficult because um, there's only 14 months between me and my sister Raya. And, uh, you know, we, we were like this before she left. Um, so, you know, it was like losing a twin, losing my best friend. It was very difficult at that time. Uh, although we're a very close knit family anyway, all the siblings are very close. Um, you know, there's six of us in total, my brother, Roy, Nikki, Soraya, Asa, myself, and, uh, the adopted brother, Tony, uh, all six of us were very, very close. Um, but because me and Soraya were so close in age and the rest of them were nine, 10 years older than us, you know, we sort of grew up together. Our childhood was together. Um, so it was like losing, losing you. So let's fast forward to 2019, 2019, February, uh, I managed to go out to America to start promoting the movie, Fight My Family, which was based on our family. Um, it was a very exciting time. Uh, I flew out there. I managed to go to the Hollywood premiere. I managed to go to the New York premiere. I managed to go to the London premiere. And I got to do the Norwich premiere. So I'd done all four, uh, which was a fantastic time. You know, it sort of gave me a glimpse to what life could have been had I been signed in 2011 with my sister. Um, but, you know, it was a crazy ride. You, you, you know, you, you've got Cars turning up to pick you up and your suits being pressed in the back, in the boot. Um, you know, it was, it was unreal. You're turning up and there's paparazzi everywhere. You know, people trying to get a picture with you. Um, you know, just to, to, to be the center point of the world at that point. That's how it felt that, you know, everything was about me and my family. And, uh, you know, it was... It was a nice thing, but it was also a very scary thing um, to be the forefront of media and, uh, you know especially because some of the movie I was portrayed as, you know, a, a jealous older brother, which the jealousy, I'm more than willing to put my hands up and say, but, you know, there was no sort of bitterness or nastiness towards my sister. Um, you know, I just wish I was there with her. I wish I could have carried on being the big brother that I had been and uh, protect her and looked after her. Um, so, yeah, it was a hard time, but so with the movie, obviously it portrays our stories and, and uh, you know, the two sort of branches that come off. Soraya made it. I didn't. Um, but, you know, the, the the story ended great because it showed what I do within the community and how I help people achieve their dream, which is fantastic. Um, first time I ever watched that in October 2017, their first draft. Um, I'd just come out of, come out of a, a breakdown, a nervous breakdown um, with multiple things that are happening that all just caught up with me in the end. But I watched that the first time and it was like an out of body experience. I honestly thought like, wow, like this is what I do. And, you know, I don't need a, a tap on the back or loads of people saying, well done, or, you know, millions of followers. It was the fact of, you know, I see it with my two eyes, what I do. Um, and it was... It was eye-opening, you know, it was like a rebirth. It was like, okay, you know, you're not down and out. You At the time, you were only, I think, about 26 years old. Um, you know, that life, they, they, I've got a long life ahead of me and, you know, I can still achieve this dream and, and still help others achieve their dreams. So it was a rebirth. It was definitely the, the awakening that I needed at that time to get my head back in the game, to move away from mental health. And um, by doing that, every day has to be positive. I know we have our negative days, but... You know, it's just being strong minded and saying, you know, what's the positive today? How can I make today better and not worry about tomorrow or next week? So since the movie come out, the, the, there is loads of people slid into my DMs. You know, they message me loads asking certain questions. Uh, so I just thought that I'd better answer some of these questions here and now. Um, probably like the, the four or five most commonly asked questions. Um 
So question number one, did I really meet The Rock? Well, have a look at this. So as you can see, I had a video call with The Rock. It was very brief. Um, I was doing a screening where in America where people would watch the movie and then we'd go out and they'd do a Q&A and uh, we'd done about 20 of those in seven days. It was incredible. It was an amazing experience. Um, and there was a chap there called Kevin Misha, who's one of the producers. Um, he was in the audience. Someone asked me how I met The Rock and I was like, no, unfortunately, I actually haven't. I'd love to. He's one of my heroes, etc. Next thing you know, Kevin's walking down and a phone got shoved in my face and he's like, hey, Zach. And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, it was just incredible, you know, very brief. Um, but that was a clip showing you that I'd seen him on video chat. I got a small, tiny little chat with him after. Um, but, you know, to me, that was incredible. The fact that I can say, yeah, I've met The Rock <laughs> on video chat. <laughs> Another question that's frequently asked, did I train a blind kid? The answer to that is yes. Uh, the real life blind kid is James Chilvers. Um, James Chilvers doctors phoned me about five, six years ago, told me about James. Um, he has about 18% vision left in his right eye only, um, which lights can affect. You know, if the lights are too bright, it completely takes his vision away. Um, he can only see like outlines. So, you know, some colors are a little bit more, you know, some colors are better for him than others. He can see better uh, with some brighter colours. Other colours affect his vision. Um, but the long and short of it is the guy is blind. Um, you know, he's very, very tiny bit of percentage left in his right eye. Um, but the first day he walked in, he told me he wanted to be a professional wrestler. And I said to him, listen, if you've got the heart, the passion, the determination, I can make you a professional wrestler. And uh, to be honest with you, after the first hour, I knew this guy was going to do something special because uh, it's not always about the coach. And sometimes you've got to believe in yourself and push yourself to your limits. And James definitely done that. You know, I'm teaching him the bumps and the basics. And I'm like, I wonder if you could do this. And he's like, OK, let's try. You know, and that's James's attitude. OK, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. You know, obviously, crash mats and we try and make it as well protected as possible. So if he comes off the top rope with a splash... You know, we pad it out completely and make sure he can't hurt himself. But just having the, the you know, to get up to the top rope and, and dive off, you know, with someone that can't see where he's landing, can't see his opponent. That to me in itself is incredible. So, yes, the answer to that is I did train a blind kid. He still trains to this day. He still competes to this day. And I'm very proud of what James has done. Yeah. Nice. There we go. And again, straight in. Nice, and again. You know, it's not a sound of rope because that vibration does me. All right, cool. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Suck yeah. it up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Another question that is commonly asked is, did you really dress up as the Pink Power Ranger? Yes, I did dress up as a Pink Power Ranger. When my sister was 13 years old, um, one of the girls no-showed at a show. And uh, my dad asked Soraya to step in. And, uh, you know, she was a bit hesitant, reluctant to do it um, because she'd only really trained with me before shows. Uh, just throw her around or at trainer schools were getting a mess around before shows, after shows. You know, it was just like a playground to us. We were kids. Um, but yeah, anyway, me and Soraya, you know, we worked out some spots. We knew some stuff. And she was just like, um, I'm a bit scared, Dad. You know, he said... I'll do it because, you know, I know the show must go on. And I sort of said to Soraya, well, look, you know, we've got the pink Power Ranger outfit that some of the girls wear to do doubles. Why don't I wear that and, and help you out? And you can do your spots that you know. Um, so, yeah, that was fun and games. I fitted into the pink Power Ranger outfit. Uh, we padded up a bra. We taped down my private area. And uh, that's something I ended up doing for about a year. Okay, so just before I finish, I want to talk about one last thing. Uh, obviously, we know the COVID-19, the coronavirus has uh, swept across the world. And there's a lot of people struggling in the world at the moment. Uh, my sister put a tweet out saying, you know, what's your biggest struggles? What's your biggest worries? 
Um, and a lot of people said that they've been laid off work. They can't feed their kids. Um, they can't get inhalers, etc. Medication for their children in America. Um, so my sister very kindly has been sending out money. Um, so, you know, to finish the show, I want to give a massive shout out to my sister um, who, you know, made a small little bit of money during the WWE and is putting it to good uses, helping families feed their, their children and uh, helping them get their, their medication and everything else. You know, grand gesture, really proud. So thanks very much to my sister. Thanks to everyone that's watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Press the little bell on this icon over here to make sure you get a notification when a new video come out. And we'll see you again very soon.